Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we learn how to prevent duplication of code by creating custom components and use them throughout the project. In the previous session, we got acquainted with image and image background components. Formally, we create a button using the pressable component. We can define this part of the code as a separate component and use the component we defined whenever we want. To do this, I create a new JS file. Inside it, I create a structure of a functional component. And specify the name of the function as desired. This name may or may not be the same as the file name we created. Here we copy the button we created. Now we create the style sheet to copy the styles used in it. To define values such as the onPress function for this component, we must use props. In this way, we can use props with optional names within this component, whose values are actually set from another component. For example, here I define two values of onPress and the title of the button from props. The value of props can be of any type, and also functions can be used as their value. Don't forget to import the components used by React Native. Well, now I will comment the button we made earlier so that it doesn't run. And instead, I use the newly created component. We have to use the name of the main function for it, and make sure it's imported properly. Now we assign the props we defined to it. And we copy their values from the previous button. Once I take it out of the code and save it to see the previous button no longer exists. Now you see that the new button has been created with the same functionality. And in fact, the same previous codes are called from another address this time. By doing this, we can reduce the size of the code in the main component and thus increase the readability of the code. We can also prevent duplication of coding. For example, if I use the same component again, I can use it as a new button. We can also transfer any other values to the new component via props. For example, I change the color of the button through props, and I give each button a separate color. In addition to the default button styles, we may need to add a new style to it. For example, here we want to give the second button a margin to be away from the side components. So in the style section inside the array, we create a new object of props.
Now any style we give to the button will be added to its default styles. As you can see, the margin was applied to the second button. Now the function of the two buttons is the same and both work with the same function. The unpressed function of each button can be specified separately with props. Custom components can also be used to create components of a page. For example, the header that is repeated on each page can be defined as a separate component and use the same component on each page. To do this, I copy the component we created and modify it. I remove the redundancies and rename it to header. I create a view with a specific style and I put a text in it. Now we use the header component at the beginning of the main view and we make sure it's imported properly. Well, as you can see, the header we created was displayed, but it didn't take up the entire width of the page, which we will correct by changing its style. Well, as you can see, using a separate component increases the readability of the main page code. And in general change, changing a component will be done wherever it's used. When the number of project files increases, they should be categorized. So that when the project gets bigger, we don't get confused to find them. I create a new folder called src and put the JS files we created in it. When moving project files, we must be careful to address them, so as not to cause errors. For example, the error here gives us that it could not find the app.js file. Its address is in the index.js file, which we change it. By changing the index.js file, we need to refresh the app. The error is that it could not find an image. Here we use the dot because the assets folder with the app.js file were both in the same pass. Now if there are two points at the beginning of the pass, a folder goes back to reach the assets folder pass. So there we go, we learned how to create custom components to prevent duplication of coding and use them throughout the project. So in the next video we will talk about navigation. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next session.